this young man, E-Man, decided he wanted to do something to not only uplift the legacy of Chadwick Bowman, but also uplift the thing that took his life. And I'll show you guys what he did. My man went and produced this T-shirt. All the proceeds from this T-shirt, ladies and gentlemen, goes to colon cancer research and support. All of it. And we wanted to ask E-Man, before we take a look at some of the funeral, some of the action from the funeral chat with Bozeman, what made you want to dive in head first with this cause? Oh, man. Well, first of all, I saw a lot of, in my opinion, disrespect happening with um, the moment he passed. I'm seeing news outlets already talking about what's going to happen with Black Panther 2, you know? And it's like, bro, like, yo, it hadn't even been like six hours since his... Man, really? The body was still thirsty? warm. Yeah. The body y'all that still thirsty warm. for the clicks? Like, oh, he ain't even in the ground. So that already kind of riled me up. And then, you know, on social media, I'm seeing all these Black Panther t-shirt ads just going. Mm-hmm. And it's like, so y'all just trying to profit off this man's death? Like, for real? So I was just like, you know, I mean, I've done T-shirts and stuff in the past for other causes and stuff. And I'm like, you know what? If we're going to do a T-shirt, at the very least, let us do it in honor of him and what he would have fought for, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and you know, I mean, Chadwick is a person who who was visiting while he was dealing with this. And nobody mm-hmm. knew it four years ago. While he was dealing with this, he was visiting cancer patients. He was talking about, I think, on Sirius Radio or some interview where he even started getting choked up because there were two terminally ill kids that were literally fighting for their lives just to see Black Panther. You know what I'm saying? And, like, Chadwick was staying in communication with them constantly just to make sure that, like, yo, I'm going to do this for y'all. I got y'all back. We going to, you know? And I'm just like, yo, Chadwick was a real-life hero, you know? Mm-hmm. And it's like, yeah, I... If the least I can do is sell a couple T-shirts and throw a couple dollars towards the research to maybe help somebody else in the future, man, come on, that's the least we could do. So right. that that's what drove me for it was just want to do something. L- ladies and gentlemen, do you see how good this guy is? <laughs> do, 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 do you see the mentality of his heart? Let me show you his channel. Damn it, this is his channel. I mean, he is as cunning as they come. Look at the the thumbnail coloration, if you will, and how it's so melodic and draws you in. You have to subscribe to this brother's channel. Link to the T-shirt is in the video description, and also the link to his channel is in the video description. Now, having said that, we want I want to say one more thing about Chadwick Bozeman. They had his funeral. Um, it rocked a lot of people. And we've got a small little clip I want you guys to see about his funeral. And then we'll just kind of talk about his legacy afterwards as we start trying to careen into movies. Chadwick Boseman's family and friends gathered to say goodbye to the late actor. The Black Panther's wife, Taylor Simone Ledward, as well as Michael B. Jordan and Lupita Neon, attended a private memorial in Malibu, California, on Saturday. Many loved ones gathered and took moments consoling one another in Ledward. The memorial was overlooking the ocean and included music from a hang drum. There was a beautiful table display with Boseman's photo and flowers. Winston Duke, who also worked with Boseman on Black Panther, was also there. Boseman died on August, 28 following a four-year battle with colon cancer. He was 43. Chadwick was diagnosed with stage 3 colon cancer in 2016 and battled with it these last four years as it progressed to stage four, his family said in a statement announcing his death. A true fighter, Chadwick persevered through it all, and brought you many of the films you have come to love so much. From Marshall to Da Five Bloods, August Wilson's Ma Rainey's Black Bottom and several more, all were filmed during and between countless surgeries and chemotherapy, the statement continued. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's a little bit about Chad with Bozeman. I'm going to pass the baton to Larry to not only ask E-Man his thoughts on his legacy, but anything, Larry, you want to probe this professional about with his relationship and given how much he's known about Chad with Bozeman, acting, acumen. Yeah, man, I mean... There's been a lot of memorials I've I've seen people do online. I haven't actually watched them because I'll be honest with you, man. It's just been 
it's, it's been too much. Yeah, man. It's just been. I mean, it, it, and I don't. I don't mean that in the sense like there's too many of the memorials. It's just with everything else that's going on in the world right now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That his passing was just. It felt like it was just too much at that moment. I was just. I can't deal with it, man. I was like, I just have to set this aside. I'll deal with it later at a, at a later date. Cause it's just, I know not everybody has that luxury and you know, obviously if you're a friend, if you're friends with them or family, obviously you deal with it in the moment, but as a fan, it's just sort of like just too much at the moment. And, you know, I, I'm curious if, I'm curious if he has any other movies out there that are, that have been in the works that are, that are going to come out that we'll see post posthumously or not. Yeah. You know? Yeah. There's and one, what that may- uh, I think it's the Ma Rainey uh, one that's going to be coming on Netflix. They actually postponed uh, the trailer for it and probably the the release date um, just because it was it was just so fresh. So that'll probably be the last live action uh, one that he does. But he also already did the What If uh, series for Marvel, uh, Mm -hmm. where he is going to be playing um, Star Lord. So it's going to be a what if animated series with Chadwick's voice as if what if ha- what would happen if T'Challa was the one that got abducted rather than, um, you know, Peter Quill. So that would be like the last voice thing that we hear uh, from him. Wow. All right. well, That's kind of cool. Yeah, yeah that'd be good. Ladies yeah. and gentlemen, be sure to check E-Man's channel. He does have an interview he did it with Chaz, I mean Chad, excuse me, back in 2017, and he was unabridged in the questions he asked him. Something that you can look forward to when you go to his channel, along with all his other great, great videos he puts out. Now, I want to move you a little forward, if I can, E-Man. So now with Chadwick's iconic role as the Black Panther, in essence, having a boy. Me and Larry have said we think that the best person to play the next T'Challa in 10 years, 15 years, whenever they decide to put a T'Challa back in the role. We have said that because Chadwick had a connection with Denzel Washington, with the secret Denzel Washington secretly donating to pay for him to get that advanced acting class that he got in Europe. Mm -hmm. Why not have, and we want to know your professional opinion, why not have Denzel's son John David Washington become the next T'Challa. How do you feel about that casket? So um, I'm not ready yet. Uh, kind of like how Larry was feeling about, you know, mm-hmm. just certain things. Like I've I've gone through my grieving process, you know, like the day it happened, man, I tried to just put out a video to just tell people like, yo, just go get checked out. And I started breaking down, you know, yeah, like yeah, I, I couldn't, that one. That I was couldn't the even last hold one, it in. You that know, was the last like, video I watched after that, I was like, "Nope, I, I'm out." Man, Can't like that, that was not my intention <laughs> at all. Yeah. You know what I'm saying, but we both checked that out, man. And we, I man. mean, we both was feeling, we was feeling some kind of way after that, man. I mean, right. for real, man. Right, right. But um, you know, I it, it took me like about a week or so to kind of like process it because even my wife was kind of saying, like, I don't understand why. Why does this hurt so much? And I was like, yo, like he felt like he was family. He felt like he was somebody that we all knew in some way, shape or form. Um, and and of course, the impact of Black Panther and everything. So, you know, for me, like the only reason and to be honest, like I didn't even want to talk about the future of Black Panther until after he was, you know, memorialized or buried. Right. And he I'm recently really- did a couple of days ago, as we just saw. So like. When I saw that that was done, then I was like, okay, now that the family and the closest friends have had time to grieve and stuff, I feel a little more comfortable at least talking about the future of Black Panther, but I'm not emotionally ready to recast him yet. Because honestly, to be honest, there are a lot of good options out there. Like you could really pick from a number of solid options um, that I've seen out there, and I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't really be opposed. Look, John, uh, John David Washington, man, brother was looking like the black James Bond slash Shaft in Tenant, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, so you know, I'm not gonna trip over that. Um, but my what what I recently did in the in my last episode of the recap, which you should definitely check out if you like a recap of all the Hollywood news, 
uh, in the past week that you might have missed out on. Uh, I did talk about my thoughts on what would happen with Black Panther moving forward, and it'll probably spring into a theory video of some sort so I can really have people visualize it. Um, because I think there were two popular options that people were talking about. One was bringing Killmonger back uh, from the dead, having him do a redemption arc. Um, oh, I Lord. Not, you, you, yeah. you speak, I you, you, you huh? speak, it, you speak in Larry died. language now. Here we go. Look. I'm just saying he I, never died, and he oh. is the rightful ruler of Wakanda. Oh, my God. I'm going to say, I, I, I'm gonna say no to that. Thank you. <laughs> Thank like, you. I'm, just, I'm just rejecting it in total just because I think, first of all, he's not Wakandan. He has Wakandan ancestry, but he's not from Wakanda. Nope. So T'Challa, the character, the king, is supposed to embody, I would say, almost the patriotism of Wakanda. And that's well. not Killmonger. Um, so and, and on top of that, I think it 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 undoes how good of a villain he is if we keep on trying to redeem people. Like we tried to redeem Loki, but Loki was dope because he was a bad guy. Like that's why we like Loki, you know. Um, we you know I'm they, confused a little bit though. Yeah, oh god, I'm, here we go. I'm confused because I'm not sure. I mean, at oh, what god. point were we trying to redeem? Killmonger, what did he need redemption for? I mean, the brother was a, a liberator. He was a his murderous a, ways. His murderous ways. Yeah, yeah. That, Nobody that questioned is, his motive. The way, Nobody uh, questioned his motive. It was the means that was the problem. Oh well, I mean, you got you have to break eggs. You want to make an omelet. I mean, I, that's just the way oh it is in the world. No, you don't. You can go buy a carton of egg whites already pre-cracked. You ain't got to break point. no egg. There no, you go. there's always yeah. another solution. There's always Somebody had way. to break those eggs. No, nah, I break mean, those he, eggs. He's just like Thanos, right? And this is why I like Killmonger as a villain, just like I like Thanos as a villain. These are complex Thanos guys. An environmentalist. That, sure. <laughs> but it's the means about how he went about it. That's the problem. He's going out choking people. He's this going out wiping the... out half the population Wait without giving them a choice. Wait a minute. <laughs> Larry, the problem. There, Larry, there's no there's no environment in outer space. Which, he's what an environmentalist. He realized <laughs> Thanos realized that the that all these worlds throughout the universe couldn't survive because there were too many living beings. He oh, was simply God. trying to preserve all of life okay. throughout the all universe. Right. He was he was merely a humanitarian or a, on Earth. He, he was not a humanitarian. But, we'll, but we can talk about that later. So yeah. for me personally, <laughs> am I going to trip if Killmonger is the new Black Panther? No, I'm like like I said, you could do a lot of different options. It just why not just make sure it? Why not? Now make that's, sure the, Black that's the second popular option, right? Second popular option is let's make sure the one because that's comic accurate. It mm -hmm. makes sense, especially within the storyline. But me trying to look at the bigger picture, the bigger Hollywood picture, we got to be honest here. There's no more Tony Stark. There's no more Chris Evans and Captain America. Thor is about to make his way out sooner or later. Mm -hmm. Letitia Wright is not carrying that character. I, no. It's nothing against the sister at all. I love mm -hmm. her as an actress. But she doesn't have the star power that mm -hmm. if we were to see her in Black Panther, that people would be like, I got to go see that. We'll go mm -hmm. see the movie. But I'm saying we're not going to be seeing it for her per what? se. Now, see, this is where I, I disagree you, on that. You, because... you, let me give you one alternative to counter right. that, because Marvel is not stuck on sticking with the comics, right? Not in the not in the movies. They they like to drift off a little bit. I say you give it to Nakia. You give it to Lapita because Lapita Lapita is a Oscar award winning actress. She is way more well known. With the story, she's her mindset is the one that T'Challa actually adopted. And people were saying right before when T'Challa was thought to be dead, they was like, Nakia, you take it. You should take the serum so you could be the Black Panther. And she was like, yo, 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 I'm a spy. I don't do that. So I'm just saying there's a lot of ingredients there. If you still want to check off the box of having a Hollywood star, you still want to check off the box of diversity of having a female, you know, lead or, or protagonist or whatever. And you actually make and it still fits in the story that can work. Now, I do think you still eventually need to recast T'Challa. And that's why I'm going to try and come up with a theory to see like, OK, how do we recast him without making this awkward, still fitting in the story, still giving a little honor to Shuri and to Nakia? Because I do think that both of them should be highlighted and we can still get a, a new T'Challa 
and everybody be happy. So that's kind of like what I'm working on right now. Okay. Um, and I think that I think that'll check off all the boxes for the money, for the you know honor that is you know that comes with this property, um, and the you know staying true to the story as well. Well, I hmm. I, I I think that Nakia wouldn't be a bad choice. I guess I like Lapita as an actor. I think Leticia is, is a is a fantastic actor. And as far as having the stage presence or the gravitas to pull that gravitas to pull that off, I think part of that has to do with the directing. I mean, you have to direct your actors into that. I mean, there are some people who just have a very big presence, and other actors you have to bring that out and in in the directing. And, I'm a, and I'm a, I think Brian Coogler is someone that can do that. I'm gonna disagree with that only because there are some actors that have a cap. You know, there are certain actors that they can only do so much. You know, for example, uh, Jason Momoa. He's he, he's a he's a limited actor. He can do very limited roles. No, um, okay. No, and, no matter uh, how good the director is. No matter how good, I'll give oh, you another no, one. I agree. This, I agree. This might to get a I feel the same way about Terrence Howard. I think he's. I think what? he's. What? Yeah, I don't I think mean, he's that great of an actor. I think he's I mean, done some things, but like I, you said, I, he has a cap. I would say, uh, you know, to get a little spicy, Anthony Mackie, because this is something I've been saying for a long time. Anthony Mackie, Anthony Mackie, not, really. He's not a bad actor. He's not a good lead actor. He's a phenomenal mm. supporting actor. When you put okay. him on a show or a movie with a co-star, he can shine. When you put him on a movie as a supporting actor, he can shine. When he's the lead, the movies don't do well. Did did now, you did you see the, him the in the banker? Don't do well. Did, did I did. See? I did. But if if there was no Sam Jackson, are you still watching that movie? Eh, I think it loses a lot. I think it needed that co-star. I'm just saying, it, go look at his I resume. Agree. Go look I at his agree. resume. And it's not even trying to throw shade at him. It's really just a matter of like, yo, I've tried to watch things where you are the primary lead and it don't go hmm. nowhere. Well, I, I was going to say, I've never seen him in what you would say is a primary lead other than the banker. That's because they don't be promoting well and they don't do well. So you're not going <laughs> to see him. <laughs> okay. the one time the one time i'll give him one credit no i'll give him a little credit eh, even though he was kind of a co-star too it was in a uh, black mirror he did that one video game episode if anybody's seen it mm. i've seen it <laughs> you I've already seen okay it. I've okay seen it. i mean he yeah. was kind of a co-star but the, yeah. the the reason why he was able to shine in that was because i think he was playing himself like i think he was there was nothing for him to really do in that episode so he was comfortable. It was a good role for him. It was a good fit. So he succeeded. Um, <laughs> but yeah. Oh, I just I just got to mention this about power. My folk AJ Young said Tariq and Power, very limited actor, same role every <laughs> every show yep. and every. Because you know why? You know why though? And all the roles Tariq is in, when he got a daddy, he don't never listen to none of them. Oh, but he's like true. the worst kid to raise. That's, I'm that's saying true. he's that's like true. the worst kid every yeah, single time. Yeah, so, yeah, that yeah, is yeah, true. They right. That they is right. true. But you know what? He he got a producer to jump on his back, and that producer is Rodney Courtney Kemp. Said her favorite character in Power, for whatever the hell reason, was Tariq. And you know, know what? Why. He riding that horse all the way to the bank. I don't know why. You know who all had right, more so, so, who had, so here's Ray had more potential than Tariq. I agree. Well, here's a movie. Go ahead. Here's a movie with Anthony Mackie. I didn't particularly like the movie all that much, uh -huh. but I thought he was good in it. And that is uh that's point blank. I Ooh. thought he was good in that. Point blank. I didn't particularly like the movie all that much. He played a he played a uh, a nurse that he had a played oh, a nurse whose pregnant with, wife was uh, kidnapped. He and was he ended up with, having uh the other dude. The white dude. Yeah, the dude that's real big and yeah. he's real big in China as a villain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I know you're yeah. talking about. I co-star. He ain't the top villain. He was a co-star. He, he was. He was a. He was a. Well, okay. Yes, he he's had. He had a co-star in there. But when everybody. You the, when you see the movie poster, it's not just Anthony Mackie. It's him you're and right. the other. Everybody person. has a co-star in their movies. Not everybody. Tom not Tom everybody. Tom I mean, Tom Cruise ain't got no. Den Tom Denzel Cruise Washington. Know. Denzel Tom Cruise, has a whole, Tom Cruise has a whole supporting cast around him. He's got Ving Rhames. But you he's don't got, see him promoted. Got, uh, you huh? see just Tom Cruise's face on that poster most of but the that's time. Marketing. We're not. We're talking about the movie, not the marketing. That's the villain, though. He's top villain. But we're still talking about the movie, not the marketing on there. I mean, even the movie, like 
Okay. I mean, look, like I said, you let me know the next time Anthony Mackie has a movie out, and you like, dog, I'm about to go see that right now. You let me well, know when that happens. Well, I mean, they have to give him something worthy of going to see right now. How long you has know? it been? How long has it been? He's been working. He's been a vet. This dude yeah, is he, a vet. He's a pro. He's, he's, he's been, been out there for, I give it to you. He's been out there for a minute. I'm just saying. And here, here's the sad thing about Anthony Mackie, and then I'm going to move you guys. Oh, my God. When somebody they, said him is Tupac. When, he like, I, was about to say that. I was about to say, every time I see Anthony Mackie, I think Clarence. Oh, <laughs> every time I see oh. Anthony Mackie, I just think Clarence. That's what <laughs> I think. You, thank you for making my point. Thank you. Every thank time you. I see I just think Clarence, man. But anyway. And next time, y'all go watch Crossover and come back to me. <laughs>